Alright. Okay. So now we move on to look at 34. Now, so again, uh, further to what we discussed just now, see why we have 34? Because we give you a backup for expenses that 33 is not covered. So you must recall back the example I gave you about this kind of thing. Okay. So why when I train my worker, I can. When I train other people's worker, why must have 34? So you think back of all this. Okay. Now, so I'm going to run through with you the list of expenses that falls under 34. Okay. Now if you see the heading of 34, 34 is actually deduction for business. Okay? 34 is deduction for business. Now, if you are not you are not having a business source, you will not get 34 deduction. Understand? Huh? Okay? So this 34 is only for business. So if you're not doing a business, you will not get 34 deduction. And in fact, some of the 34 deduction is so specific that they are not just meant for business. They are meant for business run by companies. So it's only if you're a company, then only you can claim. Now I'm going to run through all that with you all later. Like see, for example, they say amount incurred by company. That means if you're not a company, you still cannot claim. You must be a company running a business, then only you can claim. Understand? Not? Okay? Alright. Now the first deduction we're gonna see here is deduction to do with Dafu debt. Now remember earlier I've explained to you issue concerning incurred. Okay? Uh, when we go through the word incurred. I'll give you a few examples that we say all these allowances, provision, they are not incurred. And when they are not incurred, they fail 33. And when you fail 33, now I cannot say fail 33 means you cannot deduct. You have to see other provisions of the law. But chances is they are not deductible. Okay? So all these uh, depreciation, allowance for your obsolete stock, your provision for warranty costs, all these, they are all not incurred. So they fail 33, so they don't get deduction. But there's an exception here to do with doubtful debt. Okay? Now, doubtful debt, if you do, now as I say, the word provision is just for tax. Huh? Okay? Accounting-wise, you don't use this word. Now, so if you see the word provision for doubtful debt, now a provision is not incurred. But there is a different part of the law here in section 34 that grant deduction for doubtful debt. Now, that's the law. Okay, but before I go through the law, I'll just give you a diagram so that it will be easier for you to identify. Okay? Now, you want to know whether deduction is granted for allowance or the, the old word provision for doubtful debt. Okay? Now, the first thing you ask is, is this specific? Okay, is this specific? So I've told you accounting wise, there's no such thing as specific generally. All the allowance must be specific. But in exam, you still get this kind of thing that sometimes you see the word general allowance or general provision come up. Okay? So, is this specific? So, what is the difference between specific and general? Now, I've told you. See, in the past, when we say a general one, is you take X percent of your debtor's balance. Uh, that's called general. Specific is, you have identified that specific debtor. Let's say, for example, I have a debtor called James. And James, I know, is in financial trouble. He cannot pay me. So I say the debt owed by Jim will not be recoverable. So I made an allowance for it. Now that is specific. You know the person. You know the debt. Okay? Now, so the first question you ask is, is this specific? So if let's say the 
answer is no. That means it's a general provision. Huh? So it's general provision. There will be no deduction. Why? It's not good. Understand? Because it's not incurred. All right, then. Now, assuming that the answer is yes, it's a specific provision. The next question you must ask. Is this trade debt? Trade means is your customer. Okay? This must be your customer. So they are trade debt. Now, again, if your answer is no. So example that the debt is not trade, e.g. like employee loan. Okay? So you make a specific provision for employee loan. Now, it's specific, but it's non-trade. Okay, it's non-trade. Now, same thing, it's not deductible. Okay, so the purpose must first, in association, it relates to trade. Now, Yes, it's trade debt. Now, even not all the trade debts are given deduction because you must see what kind of trade debt is this. So, the last thing is has this debt been assessed as Your business income previously. Now, recalling back the principle we explained last week, contra. Uh, remember, contra. So the reason why deduction is given for the problems of bad debt is because when I tax you, I tax you on a cruel basis, on assumption that you're going to get back the money. But because now, after I tax you, you fail to get back the money. Now, fail is bad debt already. Now, we're not talking about fail. Now, we're talking about provision only. You believe you, you cannot get back the money, so you make an allowance for it. But it's still something that you have taxed before. Uh, then you get a deduction because 34 allowed that. But if let's say the debt has not been assessed previously, that means you have not taxed this. It was not your income. Then you'll be thinking, hey, but how can trade that but not be taxed? Now, this one case example, these are taken over debtors. Example, taken over debtors. Business acquisition. Okay? Now, so what is this taken over debtors? Okay, I'll give you an example. Huh? Alright, now let's just imagine that I'm buying a business. Get a piece of paper first. Okay. Now see that's me. Okay, this is my business. I am acquiring another business. Okay? Now, when I acquire the business, I'm going to buy their asset. Fair enough. So, I buy their furniture, machine, stock, including their customer, right? So the assets that I buy over include their 
customer. In the sense that their existing customers that still owe them money will now belong to me. So this will include trade data. Now, let's say in this business that I acquire, let's just say there's a trade debtor by the name called Kevin that owe the business 20,000. It's good sorry. Okay, that owe the business 20,000. So after I acquire the business, after I acquire the business, what will happen in my account is what? What's the, the entry? What do you debit credit? Let's say you pay 20,000 to buy back the 20,000. Because you're buying the business over, right? You will pay, right? So I'm just assuming that you're paying the same amount. So debit credit is what? You debit debtors. Huh? You credit your bank. Huh? You pay money. Huh? So you debit trade debtor. 20,000. You credit bank. 20,000. Now, these are trade debtor. But these are not your sales. You know this? Compare with, if let's say in my business, I have credit sales to, let's say, another guy by the value of 100,000. Now, that would be debit trade data, 100. Credit sales, 100. So at the end of the year, when you declare your income to the government, okay, so we declare the income. The amount that you're going to show in the tax com is what? You're going to show 100,000, right? This is your income. Now, will this 20 appear in the income? No. Because it's not your sales. Then what is this? It's trade data. But data that you buy back. Because you're acquiring another business. So now you imagine, if I make allowance, I make a specific provision for this trade data and a specific provision for this trade data is two different trade. One is a trade that I've taxed before. One is a trade that I've not taxed before. One is just an asset that I buy back only. No doubt you label it as trade, but you've never taxed this. Can you see not? So why will not why will deduction will not be given? Because I've not taxed this. What is there for me to contract? Remember, the principle is contract. What is there to contract? I never tax you. Uh, there's no contract. So that's why, if you look at the debt, and the debt is taken over, then it's not deductible. We have not taxed you before, so there is nothing for us to contract. Okay, so there's no deduction given. Now there's the three questions you would ask. So if you see the issue about provision, you always ask these three questions to decide. Can get deduction or not? Now only when you get all the questions here as yes, 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 then deduction is given. Now, when deduction is given, the next issue is you must remember if deduction is allowed at the provision stage. then deduction is not granted when you are writing off. You understand? Because you can't be claiming deduction two times. So once you have deducted at the provision stage, you must not get back a deduction again when you write off. Understand? Okay? Now, so again, this must go back to issue about accounting. Because in the exam question, you must see what happened in their account to decide what adjustment you need to do. Now, you see, now to make things simple, uh, I put two names over here, okay? So I have two trade data, Joseph and John, all right? Joseph and John, 50,000, 30,000, okay? 
and this happened in 2010. Now, these are both my customer. So I've sold to Joseph and John. So both of them appear in my sales. So I have 80,000 sales. Huh? So now I've text the figure. Okay, I've text the figure. Now in 2011, something happened to John that I believe I will not be able to recover back the debt. So I make a specific provision of 